Hello, and welcome to Ms. Cooper's art class. Today, I'm going to be showing you a couple different watercolor techniques. Um, now, some of these are just regular washes, and some of these are textured techniques. So if you're looking for something just about washes, um, I have a separate video for that. But what I'm going to get into first is what materials I'm working with today. Um, so you can use either illustration board or watercolor paper for this. I chose to use illustration board because I want this around my classroom for years to come. You can see it's quite a bit thicker than watercolor paper and it doesn't really um, bend as easily so it's going to be a little more durable for my setting. Um, but all of these work with watercolor paper. I also have a basic set of watercolors ready for me and I have um, a really basic flat brush ready to go. I have my water ready to go to break up those paints and I have two sections of paper towel. Some things you might want to have around for this, um, if you have rubber cement um, or any kind of material that will help keep white areas in your paint, you can definitely do that. Um, I have a bent paper clip over here, but anything sharp would work. I have some crayons to do some resist techniques. Um, I have some salt, but glitter works just as well for this technique, um, if not better. Um, so that's something you can definitely grab. Um, I have some fabric. This is really more for fun, for some extra areas. Now, some other things you can have around um, are some extra brushes. If you want a better variety of shapes, that is totally up to you, but you can definitely practice all of these without those brushes. Um, I'll make a note before you get started. Some of these techniques are going to require painting onto dry paint. So the water blossom one and the wet on dry are going to need to be painted first. So I'm going to quickly fill in those spaces with some color first. And I think the water blossom technique shows up really well on dark paint, so I'm going to paint that area nice and dark, and I'm not going to focus too much on uh, making this paint look a certain way. I just want to build up some color, so I'm not even going to try to do a really nice wash or anything. Um, I'm also going to fill in the wet on dry section. Um, I think I'll choose kind of a, a more middle color for this one. I think I'll choose a nice bright orange. The color choices don't um, really matter too much for what we're doing today. I'll tell you if it does matter. I think the water blossom shows up better on some of the darker colors. Uh, but beyond that, I don't uh, think a lot of these really require a specific color. So with that, um, I'll talk about bruising first since we need that water blossom and we need the wet on dry to actually dry first. And I'm gonna zoom in for this. So for bruising, this is when we maybe don't treat our paper super well when we're working with it. So let's say you are working on your painting and you're putting in some blue. That's what I'm going to choose. So I'll add some blue paint and I'm not really uh, painting this any particular way. But I'll add some blue. But let's say you um, make a mistake or you're not happy with an area and you start really scrubbing at your paper or at your board, and you're really kind of roughing up that surface with your brush, you'll notice that um, the paper takes on a texture. And you can see where this area is a lot darker and more textured than this area. Let's say you keep doing it even more. You can see now there's these little dark blue spots appearing where I'm even losing um, little pieces of the surface of my illustration board and those are actually appearing in the paint and now I'm getting all these little dots. So that's what bruising is. Um, and it really does show up darker. It's kind of like a bruise on the skin of the paper. So the key there is to be kind to your paper, be nice to it. If you bruise it, it will peel up and it might give you some of those spots. So that's something to kind of carefully think about while you're painting. So now let's talk about water blossoms because um, I think that section is dry enough now. So this is something that you might notice in your finished painting happening as you work. 
Um, so this is something that will happen to a dry or almost dry area if you accidentally drip some water in it. So if I drop a dot of water on there, what's going to happen is eventually it's going to create a little bit of an edge. And I'll hold up an example of this, um, of one that's dry. So I'm going to push this board in here. And you can see where there's kind of blue spots with pinkish red edges where the paint kind of separated back out. It was dry, but then because I dripped water on it, it kind of bled a little bit. And this is something that you can do on purpose for texture if you want to. But I find that it does happen to people accidentally sometimes. And if I want to speed this up, I'll take a little bit off of there. So I'll move over to our charging section. So this is something where you start with some wet paint. So I'll start with, I'll start with some yellow. I think that's a nice, um, pleasant, happy color for today. And I think the charging will show up really well on that color. So I'll really load up my brush with yellow. You can even see some of the yellow in my brush. And I'll add that on. And then while it's nice and wet, I'm going to add more paint into it for a wet on wet kind of technique. And as I change my colors, I'm making sure to um, blot my brush off on my paper towel. So now I'm going to get my green paint wet. I think that sounds like a nice color to add to my yellow. And I'm just going to, it's kind of like I'm, I'm charging it. I'm actually rushing it with more paint. And you can see that it's kind of blooming and blossoming a little bit on the page. I'll refocus a little bit there and you can see how you're getting those fuzzy textures. It actually reminds me a lot of fall leaves and the way that color spreads through a leaf. Um, so maybe I'm going to keep, keep going with that leaf idea and maybe I'll add a little bit of red. I'll keep charging. So now I'll talk about what happens when you paint directly onto water. And this is a wonderful technique for something like a sky. So I'm going to use blue to demonstrate this. It's great for backgrounds. So I'm going to load up my brush with just water and I'm going to get my surface nice and wet. Maybe you can even see the shine on the surface. And then I'm going to take some blue paint. I'm going to drop that into my water. And you can see how it's starting to blossom out. It's a lot like charging, um, but the difference here is that when you charge, you're charging just paint into water instead. And I'll turn off my light so you can see that edge just a little bit better. Um, this is also wonderful for something like clouds. If you take the paint all the way to the edge of your water, then you can get a nice defined edge. Let's say that we have a fluffy white cloud right here where my bristles are, then you have a nice defined edge before you get into the rest of your sky, which maybe has some blurry clouds in the background. Um, so that's a really good way to set up your sky and really see it come to life. So now let's talk about the even wash. And for this, I'm going to zoom out a bit so we can um, see how I'm going to hold my board for this because you have to tilt it off of your painting surface. So to get my wash nice and even, um, I've kind of already done something similar on the wet on dry. But what I'm going to do is I'll make sure my brush is a little bit wet and this works best I think with a flat brush but you can do it with any other brush shape. And to get that color nice and even, what we're going to do is load our brush with our color. I'll make it a little bit wet. So I'm going to paint my color onto my board and I'm going to let the color drop to the bottom. You can see there's a darker bead of green forming. So I'm going to do another stroke with my paintbrush and I'm going to pick up that bead and keep carrying it down the page. And this is fairly even. You can always kind of take a second go over it if you want to even it out a little bit more, but you want to be careful not to bruise your paper. So I'm just going to do it very, very gently. 
All right, so now let's talk about graded wash. And this is um, another one where you probably want to take your entire board and tilt it a little bit. So for our graded wash, this is where we are going to start with a nice dark color. I'm going to choose red for this one, and I'm going to paint it on nice and dark without too much water. Now after that, we're going to get a bead at the bottom, and I'm going to tilt it so it rolls just a little bit more. But I'm going to take my brush and add some water. I'm not going to get it completely clean, but I am going to add some water before I drag that bead down the page. Then I'm going to add some more water and keep dragging down the page, and then I'll add more. And then I'm going to completely dry my brush off and pull that last bead. Now what you'll notice is I have a really dark line. If you get a line like that, that means that you didn't move fast enough. I kept a bead of paint here and I moved it, but I didn't do that in this area. So I kept a free space at the bottom to show you that you need to move fast. Because um, again, you, you have to move quickly for this one. So I'm going to do that again, but this time I'm going to move. I'm going to go along a little faster and lose some of my demonstration voice so I can go a little more quickly. So again, I'm going to add this. I'm going to make sure that I pick up that bead right away and drag it. And then I'm going to add more water to my brush and use just a plain wet brush with just water. And then I'm going to dry off my brush and blend it down the page. And you can see how I lost some of that line. And I can always go back and smooth it a little bit more. And I can always add more red paint up at the top when it's flat again to create that graded wash. But it's a lot smoother because I moved a little faster and because I dried off my brush right away. So that's something to think about. We want to avoid a slow movement for that one. So let's go back to this wet on dry section right here. So I think my orange is nice and dry. So this is where you would maybe add textures or details. And I'm going to change brushes for this one to a little bit of a smaller brush. I'll pick up a color that contrasts well with orange. I'll pick up a purple because I don't really want these colors to blend. I just want these colors to stand out. So this is good for maybe things like fur, especially where you don't want it to blend. You really want that texture in there. Or maybe you're beginning an eyebrow. Um, it's like an orange person, I guess, with purple eyebrows. But you want these little hairs to stand out. So you would want to make sure that your paint underneath is perfectly dry so that you don't end up blending your colors together. So that's wet on dry. It also is a great way to practice your glazing where you just take a color and smoothly apply it over the other ones. So maybe you've applied that orange and you just want to kind of edit that just a little bit so you can smooth on some yellow and alter that color just a little bit. So that's another reason why you might want to do wet on dry. So now let's talk about how you blend colors but in a wash. So maybe you want a very gentle blend in your sky but you're blending from something like purple to an orange. So you want this to blend fairly smoothly. I'm going to start with what would be the top of my sky and I'm, I'm holding this off of the table so it's a little bit easier to work with. Um, I'll add plenty of water to my purple and put that on the top. But I want my colors to have their own space to be their own color so I'm going to put the orange on the bottom instead of putting it directly in the purple because I still want both colors to show up separately. I want the person viewing this to know that it has orange and purple. I'm going to clean off my brush and just use water and let that space in between become a space where I can blend those colors together and start going back and forth. So you see there's very clearly orange in my painting, there's very clearly a purple, and I let them blend in between. Now if you notice some blending happening that you're not so sure about, you want to make sure that you're lifting it off right away. I like to lift with a paper towel very gently. Um, I think that's a little faster and more effective, but if you need to very gently pull some paint off, you can just use your paintbrush. And you get that nice in-between area. Then you can always go back and keep adding more colors, but now you've established that there 
are two separate colors and you don't want to immediately blend them into each other because you want them to have their own space. So just make sure you continuously clean your brush and wipe it off in between your different colors. Now dry brush is a really fun one and I'm going to move my regular brush off to the side and use a different one that I haven't used yet. This one is completely dry. And I'm going to dip it into my well of paint. I'm going to choose one that's um, not super wet. I'm going to choose um, maybe a drier part of my red paint. And so you can see on the tip of the brush that that paint is super duper dark. This is also good for things like fur or maybe eyelashes where you want an intense color and you want a bit of that wispy look. It's good for plants and grass and um, other things like that. It also shows the natural texture of your paper. You can see those brush strokes look a little rough um, because my paper texture is now in there as well. And this is a great one to build up over time. It's a very fun technique, very simple, um, and comes out very nice. Um, so scratching and then painting is another great technique for details. You can take something sharp. I'll take a bent paper clip because I think a lot of people have that on hand. I'm just going to scratch my paper. Then I'll pick up a brush, I'll pick up some paint, and I'll paint over it. So I feel like painting green over that today, so I'm going to add some green paint. And you can see that texture showing through now because the paint wants to settle into those areas. I'll show you another one that's dry because I think it's a little bit easier to see it when it's completely dried. So I'm going to move another board on top of it and you can see another version of it scratching. Especially if you use a light color with a lot of water, it'll really want to settle into those areas. So let's talk about lifting. So this is what happens and what you do if maybe you added a little bit more color than you actually wanted to add to your painting. So I'll paint some blue on my page. And what I'm noticing is I'm getting some beads off to the side that I don't want. What I do is I rinse out my brush and I dry it off so it's mostly dry. And then I can take my brush and pull that color off of my paper, especially if I want the area to be lighter anyway. Maybe there's a vague cloud right there. So I'll lift off some of my paint. You can also use your paper towel for this as well. Um, I think it makes an interesting texture, especially if you have sharp edges. So I think that's a nice technique. Um, so let's talk about glitter and salt. Now this works best if your paint is fairly wet when you do it. Um, it's, it's a bit of a picky technique because your paint has to be just the right wetness for it to, to really take effect. So I'll get my brush fairly wet before I add my glitter. And I'll add purple. I think that I'm feeling that color today. And then while my paint is nice and wet, I'm going to sprinkle some salt in there. Um, the best way to avoid putting too much salt on at once is to kind of pour it into your hand first and then sprinkle it on from there. And you can see in those wet areas where it's getting really dark, but in those drier areas, it's not because it needs more water to work. Um, sometimes you can almost like drip a little bit more water on there to get it to work. So sometimes that works, but really you have to have the nice wet paint on there. And then look at all this extra that I would have accidentally dumped because um, the container really suddenly opened. Um, so that's why you want to make sure you pour it into your hand first. Um, now I'll show you an example of where I applied glitter because that also works really well. Check that out. So I applied glitter and then when it dried I just brushed the glitter off and it left these really cool markings and they're shaped like hexagons because that's the shape of the glitter so I thought that was um, particularly neat. So you do have to leave the salt on there. Uh, it won't work unless you let it sit. So I'm going to let it just dry and just do its thing and then later I can brush off the salt. All right, let's talk about resist. Um, so this is when you put something waxy on the page. So I'm going to apply 
some white crayon, um, but I'll also apply some yellow and some red to make it interesting. And I'll apply a nice dark pink color. I'll apply um, some purple to this so you can really see that resist in action. So as I paint on, you can see that the paint will not stick to the crayons because the water doesn't want to stick to the wax. And so that's a really good way to keep some of the whiter areas on your page white. Um, you can also just apply paint with something really neat and interesting. So I chose this funky sparkly fabric because I think that would be really cool. So there's kind of two ways to apply with cool items. Um, one way would be to just take your item and just dip it into the wet paint and just start blotting the paint onto the page. And it has this pretty interesting texture. The other technique you can try that takes a little bit more time is you can soak a lot of paint into the object. So I just kind of soaked it with green paint. And I'm really gonna like press that paint in there with my fingers. And then I'm gonna dab it on there. And what you can do is you can leave it sitting there overnight. I like to do that with bubble wrap. Um, I think it looks really cool when you leave that. Um, I've also heard of people um, leaving, I don't know, I've heard of people leaving feathers and stuff too. So you won't see the full effect. What I'd like to do is I'll swap this out for bubble wrap. Um, so this is pressed into paint, um, but I've also seen people apply it with just bubble wrap overnight and it does something really similar. Um, bubble wrap is one of my favorite tools for making art. So you've just learned a lot of different painting techniques. And then from there, you can use that wet on dry technique on any of these sections. Um, anyway, thank you so much for watching. Um, and if you ever have any questions, definitely leave those in the comments. Um, like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And thanks for tuning in. Happy painting.